All right, in this video, we are going to look at using PuTTY. And what we are going to do is we are going to connect to RDP after we uh, connect to our SSH session. So we're going to be tunneling uh, through the SSH to connect to RDP. And the context of this is, let's suppose that you are trying to reach server B, but you are not able to reach server B. Let's say it could be a firewall or, or some issue that's preventing uh, that, maybe a custom setup. But you are able to reach server A. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to SSH to server A, and we're going to set up a tunnel so that we're able to connect to server B through server A. So that's what we're doing here, and that would be a situation in which we might want to do this. There might be other options for us depending on our system. This one is looking at Windows. So the first thing is uh, to have PuTTY installed. You'll notice that I'm using uh, PuTTY. This is release 0.73. It's important because it may be different. Another thing as well is I highlight PuTTY Gen here, EXE, because we are uh, the prerequisites is that PuTTY is installed and that we're able to SSH to our server uh, using the PPK key or related key that uh, we can get. And if you don't have one, you can, of course, convert or generate those um, with PuTTY Gen. Okay, so uh, a couple of the highlights as well here because this was uh, very easy to overlook. This is an, an older uh, software interface, so it doesn't like automatically save, and that's going to be a gotcha. So I used intentionally a fake server. This does not exist when I checked, and that's intentional. And of course, uh, save the session. Once we put on our information, we want to save the session. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do after we do that, we're in this session right here. I should point that out, highlight that, because it doesn't come through on the screen very well. So we're on the session. We enter our host name, the port. Uh, we're going to label this, and then we're going to hit save. Once we do that, we're going to go to the next step, which is we're going to specify our um, our key here, which is our PPK file, right? So we're on, uh, one second, we're on the authentication and again, that's not highlighting very well under SSH. So there's a drop down, SSH, and authentication. And this is where probably the version may be a little bit different. I have noticed that some of the windows that I've seen are a little bit different on this. So once we specify our PPK file, we want to then go back to our session, click on this, and we want to highlight Save Me or our whatever our session is called, and we want to hit Save again. Um, the reason why is, let's say we don't, we specify it and we connect, so we open a session. Well, if we come back, this file is not specified if we didn't save. So that's important to note. And then, of course, once we do that, then we are we don't see session. I did scroll down one. We are under this SSH and then authentication, or I'm not, not un, under authentication, I'm sorry. Under SSH, there's the tunnels. And this is where we're going to specify. Now, I am using a pretend server here because I'm not going to actually specify a, an IP that might actually be a server. So we're going to specify local because we are going to connect to it. We'll also notice that the port is going to be different than what we're using down here. So that's a good call out uh, just to note. Our pretend server in this case is 127.0.0.9. Of course, obviously that's local, but we're using this as a pretend server. This would be where we would specify the IP address of our uh, actual server that we would want to uh, connect to. And then it has to be a different port uh, than this. Otherwise, you're going to get into a circular reference. So once we do that, we're going to click this Add button here. So when we click that Add button, it will show up. And then we're going to want to go back to, and I know you all are tired of seeing the screen by now. I'm going to click on the Save Me, and we're going to save again, or whatever you're calling it. And so once we have that saved, then we're going to open we're going to SSH to our machine. Once we SSH to our machine, then we're going to do the remote desktop connection in Windows, and we're going to use that local IP address. So we're connecting to the server. So going back to this screen right here, we're connecting to this, but we're going to connect to our local. And again, make sure that that port is different than whatever it is. And that's where we're going to enter our username and log in from there.